we're doing our warm-ups yeah. our go live warm-ups yeah uh, welcome to grab the mic live i'm vic elizabeth turnbull founder of mic media and we're a social enterprise that makes podcasts for people and helps people to create their own podcasts as well now so the idea behind grab the mic is dead dead simple there's loads and loads of not-for-profits doing amazing podcasts and i thought well I'd love to shout about them and I'd love to inspire other not-for-profits to grab the mic as well. So why not get them live on a Tuesday and pick their brains on how they're making these amazing podcasts. And so this is the last one of series two of Grab the Mic. And I am dead happy to have Dave and Jason here from Carousel Radio. And I first came across Carousel Radio last year at the Audio Production Awards, the APAs as they're known, and Carousel won in the grassroots category. And the reason why they, um, I'm, like I noticed them was because I won silver and there was no, there's no animosity, I promise. I was like, but I, I was like, these guys are amazing. I need to invite them in for a chat. And remember, if you are watching live on Twitter or on LinkedIn and you want to ask a question, I think it works on LinkedIn is if you type in the comment box, it pops up and we can ask your question a little bit later on to Jason and Dave. <coughs> um, so a huge well done to you, Carousel Radio. Um, and at the, at the end of June, you released your 128th episode, Dave. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's incredible, really. Um, we've been doing a, a podcast and radio show. We so our, our pod, our um, we've got a radio show version that goes out on Radio Reverb, which is a Brighton and Hove based community radio station, and the podcast version that goes out as well. And we're doing one a month for the for of this sort of current format for about eight years. But then there was a series of carousel podcasts called Shut Up and Listen that took place up until 2015 for a number of years. So if you added them into the mix, there'd be, good news, like a couple of hundred episodes of Carousel's wow. podcast wow. project. So it's a big achievement. We mm. don't often get time to look back and reflect on the big numbers. Mm. When Show 100 happened, I didn't realise until it had happened that we used to hit 100. <laughs> might, might be nice to commemorate it, but because we're always looking forward to the next thing, which yeah. is really exciting, we don't often get a chance to reflect, but it is nice. It's, uh, it's, it is amazing when you think about it. Yeah, so for the untrained ear, could you, Dave, perhaps give us an introduction to Carousel and then Carousel Radio? So Carousel is a charity that started in Brighton um, 41 years ago, 1982. Whoa. And um, yeah, we're going for a long time. And our, our broad mission is to challenge expectations of what great art is and challenge expectations of who can make great art so we're a learning disability led, led organization and um we want to champion the um the right to inclusivity in the arts and media for people with learning disabilities um we also want to support them to develop their talents and ambitions in areas of music podcasting film uh, and other uh, and media um and uh we also want to um, work to create better inclusion, better visibility of learning disabled people in those industries. So we do this by sometimes um, producing workshops that are first access workshops for learning disabled young people to try their hand at these new art forms. Mm -hmm. um, we also then um, work with artists who've been with us for a few years and are developing their ambitions and their skill sets and helping them get to that next place <coughs> and also when we work with learning disabled people who are very experienced we're working with them to try and get them um, work placements in these industries or for them to become leaders in the arts to inspire the next generation of younger learning disabled people to say actually i could do that as well um so you lots of different stuff mm. across um dj and clubbing um supporting people to be in bands write music and tour as learning disabled musicians we obviously do the podcast um we do a massive film um, uh, film festival called the Oscar Bright Film Festival, which is the, I believe, the biggest learning disability film festival in Europe. Um, and yeah, a, a, a great deal of other things as well. Hard to summarise, but I hope I've done a decent job in a couple of minutes. 
yeah, he did an amazing job there. I, I think we all get a feel for, for the amazing work that you're doing at Carousel. So, Jason, yeah. tell us about Carousel Radio. What What is that? Uh, Carousel Radio is a, a podcast and a radio show which happens roughly once a month, and it's all about um, people with a lens of speech just having a voice and just having a fun place to sit down and communicate with each other. Um, I'm one of the main hosts on the show, and I often have quite a bit of banter and friendly talks with my co-hosts. We talk about um, different segments, which they've mostly come up with. Um, well, um, so that the format um, for the monthly shows tends to change every year because yeah. we apply for funding to to produce all of our work throughout Carousel across all the different art forms, different programs, and, and the podcasting radio one is no different. And we need to demonstrate to our would-be funders what the impact is that Carousel needs to create, mm -hmm. where the need is in terms of our missions to include learn disabled people, develop their skills to uh, to create more inclusivity and accessibility um, in the, at the industry levels, and then um, think about how we do that through the podcast project. Yeah. So the format changes every year. Jason, you've seen lots of different ideas. Yes. You? So may, would it be helpful for you to talk about some of the different types of I feature ideas we've done um, over the few years? Yeah. So um, I, I first joined uh, in, in one, one series where we were talking about the woods primarily, and it was more like a sort of an audio tour through a imaginary wood and then every subject like poetry or music would be related to sort of the woodland area and then the season after that or the year after that we did um guest presenters where we got a random person in every month and they hosted them the bulk of the show and we just helped them pick their theme pick what they wanted to do and guided them through that session and this this season we've got three segments well four i came up with one randomly and um we're talking about the seaside uh a random version of british politics which you made up and something called um sounds like my life which is like audio diaries which one did you come up with Jason? oh I, I came up with one that follows on with the sea things it's called sea facts where we just find random sea facts on the internet and just tell each other <laughs> you, got, uh, you got some great octopus ones for yes one, didn't you? yeah 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 <laughs> Like, how was it? Uh, did you know that octopuses have nine brains? What, they have like one and then one in each arm? Kind of, yeah. Well, they've, they've got one that's actually around their mouth, so it's sort of donut shaped. So they can't like, eat anything that's actually bigger than their mouth. Well, Otherwise, do you know what? If you've not learned anything about podcasts today, you've left with some podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you know what? What comes through to me, though, beautifully is that it's, there's loads of variety in, the, in yeah. the podcast series and i, I suppose oh, that's not only <laughs> i suppose that's not only great for you as participants and producers but also mm. great for the listener as well yeah well we we certainly hope so um it's 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 um it's an interesting challenge coming up with new ways for the show to to achieve the things you want to achieve because um as i mentioned that the format tends to change every year sometimes a little bit sometimes a lot and obviously with most sort of um with your typical podcasts that's aiming to get more and more listeners become more and more successful it's not going to deviate from a formula that works hmm. it, it would be mad if the ricky gervais podcast just overnight became something completely different it, you know it was massive because people cottoned onto it they loved the banter between the the, the individuals and it just gained more and more listeners and that's just an example so you know retaining and creating new audiences is always something that we're trying to think about that's that's a tricky one when you when mm. you change what you're doing but the fact that the voices have remained consistent so fran jason joel and claire have been presenting the show for a few years now and their voices and their personalities i hope sort of cement the show with listeners even if the features change in between i hope that the familiarity of those voices and personalities mm. keep people coming back I was going to say that because, yeah, there's a danger there where you, you're always constantly changing the format. I was going to ask you, what's the core? What's the what's the thing that rings true throughout the whole series? Well, I think for me, it's it's basically my banter with Joel because we, we, we can talk about literally anything and everything and it will always be hilarious. Um, and by, so what we tend to do is we tend to do it sort of half scripted, half improvised. <laughs> so um, the scripted part is basically just more of the structure of the show and then the improvised bits are basically just where we have a bit of fun and 
just make the magic happen. Make the magic happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the magic happen. I think um, I think the all four. The, I mean, J Jason Joel, especially, but also Fran and Claire must get mentioned. They've been involved in the oh, show for a long time. They, um, they, their ability to improvise, go off script, but stick to script, learn how to give key information, but also improvise around what other people are saying and making it sound like they're just you know down the cafe having a chat rather yeah. than trying to trying to broadcast a show is has really come on brilliantly and I, I like to think that that's effectively that is the core of the show in a way someone once said to me um the best way to have a podcast is to phrase it as a conversation between two friends rather than an actual radio show and i think that's what we try and do yeah yeah and i mean jason you've worked in in radio before previous yes. to carousel radio and do you feel that that's a distinction between podcast and radio, that it's more of a conversation? Yes, because when I was doing the show before, the majority of the time I was doing it on my own. So I had no one else to talk to. So I had to keep the, the, the thing going. So I actually had an actual list. I wrote out what segments I was going to talk about, how long for, what music I was going to play in between. And then the music law changed. So I had to be more creative for my music choices, which was more difficult. Because we weren't allowed to use any uh, mainstream, so I had to find Brighton bands that had covers. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was. Um, so basically, anything out of copyright was fine, but I couldn't use anything mainstream at the time, so I had to pick very, pick very specifically music choices. And so, Jason, thinking about when you first started doing the podcast, what? Mm. Maybe you've answered that question before, though, in terms of ad libbing and knowing when to get key points across and not mm. going. Even though you're having bants, you're not going too far off on a tangent. And mm. I suppose, what are the other things that you found? Did you find that hard to start with? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. It, it's more that you need to be sort of time aware because once you're once you're in sort of a banter around, so it, it, you, you can forget that you're going on for like more than you meant to, <laughs> and then you have to make sure to be aware that everyone else gets equal time speaking. Because if it's just like, like, like I said, for me and Joel, we, we, we can talk for like 20 minutes straight about one random thing. And <laughs> poor Claire or Fran is just sitting there quiet doing nothing. Yeah, that's it. So, it's, um, yeah. so it, it, it's all about like, like time awareness. And I think the other, the only other thing I've been struggling with is just trying to get the right distance between my mouth and the microphone because there's always been. <laughs> oh, I struggle. I struggle oh, yes. I, yeah, I'm yeah. terrible. So, I time, I, yeah. So, I think time awareness is probably the, the thing that's probably been the most challenging. Dave, I, I missed a trick and didn't ask what you did at Carousel. <laughs> um, well, no, um, my job title is um, radio and events producer. So as well as um, producing the Carousel radio and podcast project, I also look over two other areas mainly. So um, I run the Blue Camel Club project, which is a learning disability led club night for people with learning disabilities. Um, we used to do it four times a year. Um, at a big local venue called the Old Market. Now we're post COVID, we're bringing it back in stages. So we're, we're doing a couple of year at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I also run a project called My Word, which is um, working with learning disabled spoken word artists. So we've got comedians, storytellers, poets. And at the moment this year, I'm supporting them to get out and do mainstream gigs outside of the learning disability arts community, which is sizable here in Brighton. And it's a really nice community to for artists to cut their teeth on because it's a very supportive community and everyone mm. knows everyone but they want to get out there into slightly more outside of that domain so i'm helping them to do that and that's sort of carousels arguably our newest area mm. of work and that's really exciting so we're both carousel and mike media both about making stuff available for everyone making it accessible for everyone and mm. um, particularly ours is a focus with podcasts and audio but how do you are there any key things that make your uh, training or your routes for people to get involved accessible for everyone well i think um what well, I, I must mention paul here so paul ducknell is a, a freelancer who um carousel works with to facilitate the, the production mm -hmm. of the shows with the presenters so i sort of tend to pull the strings and, and make the things happen that need to happen. But Paul actually sits down with the guys and works on ideas and records and edits. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what Paul will do is when we work with a new person, um, he'll have lots of tools that he can use to make sure that person is able to mm -hmm. come across and be themselves as best as possible. So for example, 
Um, some people are great with scripts. Some people find it difficult to read. So we might say, OK, let's write some key, key, key big words down and just use those as markers. Mm. Or we might say, OK, I'm going to ask you serious questions and you can open questions. You can answer them and then I'll edit that into a spiel that you say without my questions. So effective. So there's lots of different ways you can use to make um doing radio and post podcasting accessible. We've got a, a big TV screen just behind me. You can't really see it too much, but we can put our scripts on there and make them nice and big so people can can look up at that. Um we but sometimes we ask people we say, are you happy ad libbing or you know, there's there's lots of different ways. Um, yeah. One so, thing, sorry, Paul, sorry. another thing Paul does is he will um, he will read out the line that one wants to be spoken, and he just repeats it back. So that's nothing that's, that's possible. Yeah. So there's there's lots of different ways. Um, very occasionally, if someone is um, almost a non-verbal individual, um, but they've written something, but they don't feel too confident or able to read it out, we might ask for their support worker or someone to be an advocate for them. Um, but that's really rare. Most of the time, we're able to find people, uh, find ways of getting people to to, to express themselves. Mm. Um, and it's been a yeah quite a few years in developing these these tools. But we feel like we feel like we were able to include anyone who wants to be included by by using these methods. Amazing! Some great tips there for people that are watching as well, um, who are looking to make access to creating <laughs> content more accessible as well. I think it's time to play a clip. Um, I'm going to put this What's It on the screen now. And this is a clip from your episode before the most current one. So this is the episode from June. Do you know this worked perfectly in the rehearsal, didn't it? Yeah. My name's Paul, this is my memory about the seaside. I used to go to the beach with my nanny in 1960s with my nan, the Brighton Beach, the West Pier. There were people singing, dancing, boys dancing, children singing songs. The children used to watch the puppet show. We had a picnic as well, and lots of cake, lots of ice cream, candy cups, toffee apples. It's on the right where the old horses go up and down on the way on the carousel. Women with long dresses and the big hats and lots of pebbles and starfish, the seaweed, jellyfish and the light of the stripe, sunshine, making her good and happy. So that was a clip from the um, it was you, me, and the sea feature from the from the second to last episode that's, that's live now. Um, it's a feature that you mentioned previously before. Yes. How how do you Dave? How do you go around gathering ideas for content and and preparing all that? Well, in terms of the ideas for content, um, when we're thinking about what form the podcast project will take going into the next year i think we we think about what what where are the where's the impact that we can have and what type of feature would would it, uh would have that impact so for you me in the sea it was really about having a feature that was um or had a very wide brief so you miss in you me in the sea is about asking people to come up with um made up or real stories poems or memories, or even songs about uh, the theme of the sea. So it's a very wide brief, and um, it's a brief that we've approached. We we went to um, uh, uh, an organisation called Team Dominica, and they're a local in, uh, to Brighton, and they um, train up learning disabled people and put them in work placements and to and support them on work placements to get employment skills and to stay in work. And they have. Um, they have a base in Brighton that they they do sessions with young learning disabled people to prepare them for work and, and to that sort of that that sort of thing. We approached them and said, "Would your um, candidates uh, enjoy recording some things of this feature? Would it 
would it be helpful for their communication skills, their writing skills, their confidence? And they said, yeah, absolutely. So we went down there, we recorded a number of their service users, um, sorry, candidates, as they call them. Um, and one guy wrote like a sea shanty, like a, a, hor a, horror, a horror song. Um, someone else wrote a story about um, going to the seaside on a day trip and pulling up a rope that was in the sea. And there's a, a creature on the end of it. It's really imaginative stuff. <laughs> Um, the clip you played was from an older woman, and I forget her name. I'll try and mention it if I remember in time. Um, and she's been known to carousel for a long, long time, for years and years. She used to come to our events. She finds it difficult to get out of the house now for health reasons. But she came to our office, and I recorded her memories of being on the seafront with her mum in the 60s. Um, and that's what you heard. So that was her recollecting the sight, sound, smells. We said sort of paint a picture of what, what's in your memories. So we wanted to make a feature that was accessible for a range of ages, a range of um, uh, sort of abilities. Um, and so far we've got some, some from young people, some older people taking part um, and people can people can tell us their recollections or they can make something up. So we're really that was the sort of the, the the main reason why you me and the sea came up as a feature idea and then in terms of recording the content we have um a number of we've got a good network of organizations who work with learning disabled people who if you want we want them to be the voice of the show we very rarely feature a voice that isn't from a learning disabled person because you want them to lead the show then we know that we can contact organizations and individuals and say hey we've got this idea for next year's shows we're looking for people to contribute do you know anyone or would you like to be involved? So we don't generally have too much problem getting people involved because um, we have a good network in and around Brighton and a bit further afield of people who who are attracted by the features that we want to want to uh, produce. I love that. That's a really nice example of collaboration and partnership working outside your own organisation to find content and voices and stories. Um, and that you've got a you've got a ready network who who can contribute to the podcast, um, and as well as uh, amplifying other voices outside of your organisation as well. It's it's great. So the podcast features lots and lots of features. Um, you've got in this series, create spoken word, audio diaries, polit passionate political viewpoints, as uh, you describe it. Um, lots of lovely sound effects as we heard in that clip there like i felt like i was on the beach um in our gorgeous july weather local listings how long does it take to put each episode together jason do you have a um, estimation I guess we for the for the recording part it normally takes roughly two hours to sit down and get everything done together because that, that would be the links the intros and outros, yes. the topping and tailing of things, yeah. um, but... and then uh, like the extra takes just in case. Because sometimes, we, like I said, we we'll, we'll make a mistake, and because it's not live, we can just take another one, which is <laughs> very helpful sometimes. Yeah, and then with with the the, the feature content itself, um, Paul and I will go out and and either pe people will either come to the office or our office in Brighton, and we'll go to where people are and record them, and that can be anywhere from an hour a month to three or four hours a month, depending on, on what we got to record. Um, but yeah, like Jacob said, our production sessions are only two hours long, which is a bit tight, but, um, and in that time, that's when the, um, mm. the top and tailing and links and stuff are recorded. And then uh, Paul's editing um, for each show, I would guess might take a, a couple of hours or a bit more. He's a bit of a whiz on all that stuff. So I don't reckon it takes too long, but what Paul also has to do is make, um, every month, make an hour show for Radio Reverb because that's their format, 15 minutes and 58 seconds or something. And so what that show is, is a compilation of the newest podcast, the previous months and the months before that. Wow. So it's a rolling compilation effectively featuring the brand new one and the two previous months and the best bits taken out. So he also has to edit that. So it gets through a lot of a lot of stuff, does Paul. Um, yeah, so if we, uh, sort of add, if we sort of yeah. add it all up, I'd say day and a half. Maybe yeah, yeah, roughly. It can vary, but yeah, yeah. something. If you added everyone's time, yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, having the radio radio um, output is a really a, another nice uh, outcome for for carousel and participants. That not only is it going to be on all your usual podcast players, but um, it's on 
it's available on actually on the radio as well mm -hmm. which is something we, we can other, others can think about having having that other outlet to uh, to promote and showcase um talents and podcasts as well so jason yes let's talk kit let's talk right. equipment so what equipment do you use to do your ins and outs and present a bit what are you using um... Uh, well, we use um, some various microphones, something similar to this. Um, sometimes with a pop shield on. Yeah, they mm -hmm. bought that. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, we we we, we use um, an iPad, which is what most of ah. our things are scripted on. Um, and and because then we can, because we link it to the TV, which I bought it earlier. Sorry, Dave said earlier. Um, we he can edit directly from the iPad, and it will appear on the thing. Um, another thing we have is printed scripts, so. Each of us have got something in front of us we can read from if needed. Um, there's this big piece of recording kit. I've got no idea what it is, but it's got buttons on it. Is that the one that Paul's got on his yeah. shoulder? It's, it's in a, it's in a, it's um, put some type of um, boss or some similar make. It's like a multi-track audio recorder. So you can put, plug a number of mics into that hard disk recorder effectively. And Paul gathers, gathers the content on that and goes away and edits it yeah. on his on his computer uh, another time. And then the iPad you were mentioning is for script script yeah. creating really and doing and looking at links on the internet. Yeah, like yeah. Also, um, sometimes we have like um, like music segments or other people's mm. diaries, and he can play the recordings from that, so we've got an idea of what we can have, what we we'll talk about afterwards in the segments. Yeah. And like, I guess uh, the other thing we have is just someone else to talk to, just to make the show more uh, livelier. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you've got you've got Paul there with his. Uh, weird bag thing yeah the weird bag thing yeah and is that like a do, is that like a zoom record do you think like yeah a... i think i think it is zoom i have no idea brand yeah. <laughs> no. jason just turns up and turns, does his, does his <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much pretty much um <laughs> about, due, due, due to the modernization of technology now you, you can pretty much just do the entire thing from a phone which is even it's, it's incredible and uh I, I i've seen some people do that and with the, the latest microphone technology it, it sounds almost flawless yeah, we're living in the future, Jason, aren't we? Really? Yeah. Gone the... yeah, you, you, you can probably just edit the entire thing on your phone while you're there as well. <laughs> could as well, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, I like the combination you've got, actually. You've, you've got, like, a live script in front of you on an iPad, mm. and then you've got it printed out, you've got it on the telly. So yeah. you've, got all, you've got all bases covered. Um, and it's really interesting to play a feature live and then, mm. and then the presenter reacts to it because... If you don't have that, then you want nothing to react to, have you? True. Yeah, and 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 the presenters are really good at um at giving their reactions to things because I think that's one of the things that makes the show strong is is um you guys reacting to features that we play and then it triggers yeah. your thoughts and and memories and opinions on things. So it's useful to be able to Paul will play back content that Paul and I have gathered or people have sent to us during that month for you guys to react to. Mm -hmm. that, that works quite well. Yeah, and that's yeah. It, gets, it, it also makes the you as presenter Jason sound more human. Um, mm, yeah, if you're reacting authentically to something that's being played in the podcast as well. Yeah, it's, it's why I, I, I like to improvise some of my lines because um, I find reading from a script can be sometimes dull and robotic. Yeah, yeah, it can be. Yeah, can be, especially yeah. if someone else has written it as well. It's like <laughs> <not> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So I I always just try and put my own spin on whatever line i'm saying you've got to add a bit of you into your presenting style oh, all of course. the time Always. absolutely uh so day the impact of the podcast um we mentioned earlier that you are audio production award winning but also you've had a lovely award british podcast award how has the accolades impacted you as an organization and, and the participants like jason and the team well, as an organisation, I think one of the things it's done is given us confidence that in terms of like, <clears throat> um, I think that we can, we feel that we can push the show out into the mainstream as much as we can. And we know that the, the production values and the ideas and the themes behind the show resonate with, will resonate with people. Um, obviously, it's it's um, a group of judges who who give awards at the APAs and the BPAs. Um, but I would like to think one of the things they're listening for is, you know, is this format relatable? Has it got potential? 
And um, as much I think that the show has, has got a number of impacts itself. I think we know that it does inspire um, living civil people who listen to it. Um, and it does, uh, they do enjoy hearing people from their own community having, who've had experiences like theirs on the show. Um, we People do listen to it and get in touch saying, can I do something for the show? But also I think the show being listened to by the non-learning disabled community is really important as well because um, it will it will challenge attitudes, it will surprise people in terms of the quality of, of the material that, that's on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if it's getting into the industry's ears as well through the awards, then I'll, we hope that it's doing something to um, challenge the status quo of there being virtually very, very little representation of disabled people in the in the podcast, in the sort of general audio industries, um, because it shows that actually you can create really good, um, really good podcasts. And we also, uh, Carousel also make a TV show, Carousel TV. Um, you can make really good TV and radio and music um, that's really genuinely owned and led by learned disabled people, and it could be enjoyed by by the mainstream. Mm. And I think that's I think I would hope that the awards have that impact. Um, but yeah, Jason, what about you? In terms of knowing that Carousel have won these awards, how does that make you feel? I think it's a really good achievement, and I'm really happy because my my end goal is to really have fun, and if we can help people. Well, I haven't fun. It's even better. Yeah, I think it. I think, oh yeah, and it enable. Yeah, like I say, I think it gives us confidence it does. to keep doing what we're doing. Oh yeah, um, and that's that's yeah, because yeah, because it means people have heard us, which is what our initial goal is, and it means we've done a really good job. Yeah, amazing. So, such so well done, and hopefully a few more listens through this. Grab the mic live as well. Mm. On that sort of. Uh, what impact it's had on participants. Jason, what sort of skills do you think, I mean, in terms of like the hard skills, mm. like technical bits and bobs, um, yeah. but also like what we call them the soft skills. What sort of stuff yeah. do you reckon you've developed over the years you've been at Carousel? Uh, I, I would say patience, again, time management, because that's one thing that I'm kind of bad at. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like I said, if, if, if I get on tangent, I can go on forever. Um, oh. I guess I've also been. Um, it's helped me to be more creative in in how I see things. Well, if if I could give you yeah. an example of something that Jason's done recently, you came up with. You were given an opportunity to guest present a show, weren't you? Yeah. Last year, and I think, yeah. If you tell us about what your oh, show was, um, that, that that shows I, greatly how creative you. I been. came up with a bunch of really random questions, which I wanted to ask a bunch of people. <laughs> and uh, the show theme was based around that. Um, some of the questions I kind of adapted from things I've seen either on television or out and around. Some ones I've actually thought up for my own. And I came up with a list of about 13, 14. Yeah. And yeah, I just wanted to um, get people's opinions on those questions because a lot of the uh, answers aren't standard. So, so it's, it's, like, it's not a correct answer for these sort of questions. <laughs> so, yeah, like you, each of your questions had um, rules applying to them. No, not every single one, but most of them. Most of them. Yeah. So the show, the series was called Following Rules Apply, yeah. and you and Joel sort of um, hosted it together. And yeah. the, the simplest one, as an example, was um, what's the dumbest thing you can hang from a crane in a built-up area? Yeah. And then s some slightly more complicated ones were you have a magic rock that you can tele that can teleport. Where do you go? But you can't throw, you know, can't throw the rock. You can only travel 50 miles away from the rock. There were sort of caveats yeah, to, the, to what, and we we um, we um asked some people within the Carousel community, some staff, some artists, some friends, and we recorded their answers, played the answers yeah. to you in the recording yes, session. And, and you we, and Joel yeah. would react and give them merit. Oh, that's a great answer. Or, oh, they, they've broken one of the rules. So they should yeah. have an alarm going off. Sure. I think that's really an example of how you've All right. become a creative thinker in terms of yeah. like, the type of content that you want to want to produce. Yeah. So um, why not ask you one of, one of, my, one of my questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So um, what do you put into a stocking to give a teddy bear the best picnic ever? So there are some rules. Uh, so the stocking, it's a standard size Christmas stocking. The stocking cannot overflow with gifts. You cannot put chocolate or alcohol because that's too easy. And bigger things means less space inside the stocking. 
<laughs> so I've got I've got to give a teddy bear a the great best picnic, picnic ever. But, but it's got to you... fit in a stocking. Christmas stocking, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> right, tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about that and then we're gonna play <laughs> We're going to play another clip, and I just want to remind people that are watching on LinkedIn or Twitter. It's best on LinkedIn because we'll get the comments. Um, okay. If you want to, maybe if you want to put your answer on LinkedIn and give us your answer about the Teddy Bear Picnic, or um, if you want to ask these two a question before we finish in the next eight minutes. So let me think about the picnic. Um, okay. We're going to play <laughs> another clip from another episode, and I'm going to get me thinking cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble Club is much more than just a nightclub. You know, it's not just going out and getting drunk and seeing your mates, but that a lot of that happens. <laughs> but all the team, everybody involved, puts a lot of effort into the theme and the second room. We've had all sorts of sensory experiments, light, sound, puzzles. The main room's pretty full on, isn't it? When it's yeah. busy. It's busy, it's put on. It's packed from the beginning to the end and it's it's loud <laughs> it's a really big sound system isn't it yeah so it's good to have a room where people can just decompress for a second we do have an act as well we have an act every time at bubble club if the bubble club chooses the act and then yeah they perform at the uh, bubble club oh I missed the mark when it was going to start because I was Googling what I was going to put in the teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we, uh, before we talk about that clip, which was really nice, and I'll tell you why that's one of my favourite clips. Um, so it's got a fit in a stocking and it's yep. got a feed a teddy bear. Do you know what I was thinking? And tell me if this is not the rules or not. You know, you can get those, and I was trying to think of the name, you can get those pasties that oh, at yeah. one end it's savoury and at one end it's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I know the ones. I can't That's remember what you question. called them though, um, and I was just googling. But all I got was Cornish pasta, but it's not Cornish pasta. So when the te if the is the teddy bear eating it? Yeah, I could do. I mean, I, I I'll be honest with you. I never actually considered that part when I wrote the question. Well, there you go, <laughs> I, I would I would presume that I would yeah. presume that the teddy bear is intending yeah. to eat the contents of the stock. Yeah, of course. Okay, well that's that is going to have one of them double ended uh, pastas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's, so a that's nice my answer. answer. Yeah. <laughs> So this I, was a sorry, go on, Dave. I I, I put a, a Statsuma and an Uno deck in mine. What a, a what an Uno deck? Well, I mean, they, they can't have a game to play while at the picnic, right? Oh, I didn't know what that was. Oh, an Uno, a deck of cards. Okay, yeah. I, get you. I thought it was some sort of new food. No, 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 no. Not very down with the kids, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, so that clip, I love it because um, it was an example of how you go out, how the podcast goes out and interviews people, but also mm. people within the learning disabled community. Um, and what that I really like that clip because you can hear a guy chuckling in the background when you go, oh, and sometimes you get drunk, and oh, so, and the guy's going, huh, in the background, like, yeah, yeah we do. You know, we get drunk. Um, so, and that's from episode 124 of the Bubble Club. So, let's think about lessons. Let's conclude um, in, in a lovely storytelling style. So, What's next, Dave, for Carousel Radio? What's the what's the next series series, series looking like? Yeah, well, we're we're actually at, at a stage now where we're where we're thinking about what we're going to do next. So I don't have a hard answer for you at the moment. That's fine. Um, but I think um, one thing that um, we're thinking about is how we can start looking at how we affect things. Um, Bit higher up in within the actual industry and how we can do our bit to um get learn to say people more visible and more included in that industry um so that's one that's a particular thing that we're thinking about in terms of designing the next year's um program um but i think uh generally i think as a sort of area to look at the sort of area of um work experience and work placements is something that I think we're we we seem to think is something that's gonna we could really develop. Um, so as well as doing the the sort of creative exp explorative work with new and young um, artists to to podcasting and audio, which I'm sure we'll continue to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to also be having a look at what we can do at the other <clears> end <throat> of that spectrum um, and thinking about how we can 
uh, include that in our program of work sort of next year. Um, but yeah, sort of watch this space, really. I suppose this is an opportunity to say, if you keep listening, if you keep listening to the shows, you can find them on any of your favourite podcast apps. Just search Carousel Radio. Um, then you'll see what we're up to. Um, <laughs> we've still got, um, between now and March, we're still doing our three features, You, Me and the Sea, um, sounds, my, like, sounds Like My Life, and When I'm Prime Minister. Um, you can and see facts, <laughs> and then uh, early next year um, we might be developing the content a bit. So keep mm. keep your ears peeled. And I really like how, um, and I didn't mention this before. How if we're thinking about funding for podcasts, how having a, that I enjoy how you do it. How that different focus almost influences the funding, or the funding ask or the other way around as well. Mm. Um, question for both of you but we're going to direct it either one of you um first so it's all about grab the mic is all about inspiring other people to pick up the mic grab the mic and get podcasting so over to you jason first mm. any top advice um that you would give to someone who's thinking about starting a podcast but is too afraid to give it a go uh i would say experiment a little and sort of find your thing and then once you found your thing build a structure around it um don't be afraid of change because change is inevitable, but don't change too much because people like consistency. Um, leave room to improvise and adapt because when things go wrong, nothing you can do about it. Um, if they do go wrong, try not to acknowledge it and just play it off as nothing. Um, <laughs> and I just, like I guess at the end of the day, just, just have fun with it. Love it. Yeah, consistency, fun, and try and smooth over those mistakes ever the professional jason i love it yeah um and day then third sector organizations good eggs that are looking to start a podcast Advice. um get be really clear about why you want to do it um who do you want to talk to what do you want to tell them what does your organization need mm. um that podcasting could achieve really be clear and evidence-based in what you're trying to do prove to yourselves that your podcast idea is the right idea get some data get some research speak to people make a pilot play it to people who aren't your best mates but who will give you an honest opinion of it i suppose that's where i might start um and finally just think about why why would I expect people to listen to this podcast? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of noise out there. To get people to spend their time listening to something is not easy. Um, I heard a podcast fairly recently from a big organization um, and I listened to it and it was just people, professionals having a bit of a jargon off with each other. And I thought, who, who is this benefiting? Who's going to want to spend half an hour listening to this? So just think about how is my podcast going to engage, entertain, make people feel things surprise people inform people challenge people you've got to elicit some sort of emotional response from a podcast so um yeah i mean there's quite a few criteria to hit i suppose but it's uh it, it's it's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of product out there so you've got to make sure that what you do is distinct in some way <laughs> and there is a purpose that it's serving i absolutely love both of your answers um, I could not have said it better myself. Well, thank you both so much for spending some time with us on this gloomy Tuesday. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us for the last in the current series of Grab the Mic Live. We're back with a new series in the autumn. And this whole series will be, and this especially will be available to watch on YouTube very soon. And the rest of the other episodes are on YouTube live now. Just search Mike Media. We've got interesting chats with the logbooks from the Switchboard LGBTQ plus charity. And uh, we've got a chat, fascinating chat with uh, Made by Mortals, who've made the hit podcast Armchair Adventures. And you can find out more about what we do here at Mike Media at micmedia.co.uk and that's m-i-c media not m-i-k-e media short for microphone not some guy called mike and if you've enjoyed watching this do promise me one thing you'd have to promise me but do me a favor share it with one person who you think will absolutely love it and that is all from now thank you so much for joining us a massive thanks again to jason and dave thank you thanks. our pleasure <laughs>